This is it! This is gonna be great! So exciting! Ah! That's it? So, for those of you out of the loop, this week, Phantom Fury released. And a lot of people will tell you that it should have spent a fair bit longer in the oven. When the release date was announced for it, I was one of many that said, Are you sure about that? It seems a little too soon, especially hot on the heels of a quite poorly received demo that debuted at Realms Deep 2023. But you know how these things sometimes go. Demo builds that are released for public consumption can often be quite out of date versions of the game. They may in the meantime have become much improved. Personally speaking, I was more than willing to put aside any preconceived notions and give the game an honest to God's shot. And thanks to the fact that I was offered review code, I was able to do precisely that. There were no pre-existing conditions to me having the review code other than adhering to the same embargo that everyone else did. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't able to produce a review in time for the embargo lift, thanks to the fact that I have twins and my life is chaos, but you can be reasonably sure that my opinions chime reasonably similarly to that of many others that have now since voiced their opinion. To such a degree that I feel it's kind of a redundancy at this point to even bother producing a review. All I really need to tell you is that, in short, Phantom Fury is a very disappointing game to play to completion. At first, it doesn't really seem so bad. And I've seen this from a lot of people who have decided to give it a shot in the wake of such reviews. The first few levels are honestly fine. They're a-okay. I would even say decently enjoyable, save for, of course, a few bugs that I experienced here and there. Nothing completely game-breaking, but still baffling all the same. And then you finally reach that aforementioned train level, of which it seems to largely function the same. The shooting certainly feels better than it did in that demo, the enemies certainly have maybe a few extra brain cells here and there, though that's not always evenly applied across all enemies in this game. But honestly, it's what came after the train level that started this long, slow descent into just abject frustration. I feel like I have to make special mention of these vehicle sections because I'm pretty sure you could remove all three of them from the game and you would actually have a better game as a result. They are long, tedious stretches of, quite frankly, not all that exciting driving, flying, and or swimming. I honestly think to vehicle sections in other games I've played over the years, and they're great opportunities for balls-out set-piece moments, but these, good grief, they are tremendously dull. Again, you're going to hear the same kind of stuff that's going to be repeated ad nauseum across multiple reviewers at this point, and... Uh, I'm tired of thinking about Phantom Fury and talking about its flaws. I've honestly tried to put it in words multiple times now. I just keep coming back to the idea that it just seems to be a tremendously mismanaged project. One that cherry picks ideas and aspects from more notable games gone by in a fashion that doesn't really A, do them justice, or B, even really serve much of a purpose within the game itself. It's a game without clear focus, it's a game without clear direction, it's a game without a clear story. There's honestly parts of this game dedicated to talking about aspects that have occurred in another game that hasn't even friggin' released yet, and all I can think the entire time is, all you needed to do was Duke Nukem Forever, but good. It genuinely should have been a slam dunk. But no, there is obviously something going on here in the pipeline between the development team, the publishing team, the overall hierarchy of 3D realms perhaps that the rest of us aren't privy to that is causing some kind of friction. Because let's be honest, when it comes to this type of project, no one truly wants to create a bad game. It benefits nobody. But when I see a game such as Phantom Fury being released as soon as it has, with as many problems as it has, my own personal internal bullshit detector goes, well, Seems like someone wanted to make money sooner rather than later. 
And I can tell you, nine times out of ten, the people on the development team for this would probably much rather have more time to work on this than less. So yeah, let's talk about 3D Realm, shall we? Not been having a particularly great run of it, have they? Graven was released to quite mixed reception. Kingpin Reloaded, from last I heard, is still suffering from multiple issues. Oh, and let's not forget the whole Embracer debacle in which 3D Realms and Slipgate Ironworks were forced to conduct layoffs of many talented people from their teams before subsequently being let go under the remit of Saber Interactive. In that regard, I can understand how feelings may be somewhat raw on the part of 3D Realms when it comes to the reception of Phantom Fury. Even then, the response they've had in both private and publicly viewable forums has uh, certainly rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. I'd say they stopped short of calling people idiots for having certain opinions, but no, people were actually called idiots for having certain opinions about Phantom Fury. Probably one of the most galling insinuations I heard was the idea that certain reviewers are just piggybacking off the opinions of others once they saw which way the wind was blowing. Which, uh, for anyone who takes themselves seriously in terms of talking about video games and reviewing them, is quite the insult. But in any case, this all disregards the fact that there was an embargo set for reviews, and everyone had a chance to play the game, myself included, and when the embargo lifted, everyone has the opportunity to post their videos, post their reviews, and voice their opinions. We reach consensus by checking multiple people's opinions and perspectives. Now, of course, some people will trust one voice over another, but if enough of these voices align in terms of their experience and their opinion, then we can reach a reasonably informed conclusion in whether or not the game is good, bad, or somewhere in between. In the case of Phantom Fury, I think at this point we can reasonably land at the conclusion that it was a fair bit of a letdown. And from that, you can do one of two things. You can listen to this criticism, you can take notes, you can attempt to rectify. In this modern age of eternally online services and day one patches, there is ample opportunity here if the willpower is present to go back in, tinker with the things that aren't up to snuff, and make them better than they were before. Lord knows other games have come back from worse. The other thing you can do, however, is stick your fingers in your ears, refuse to listen, go nya 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 nya, you just don't understand my vision, and call everyone around you an idiot. That is the position in which 3D Realms currently finds itself. A PR kerfuffle of its own making, a fire fueled by its own indignation, and a fan base that has just kind of lost patience. 3D Realms is a heck of a name. It's got a tremendous amount of legacy behind it, and it is up to the current people who have ownership of that title to make good on it. And as for that slogan, redefining AAA, I think it's time to think of a better one. Anyways, that's about all the energy that I have in me to dedicate to this particular subject. This is genuinely the kind of video that I do not relish having to make. I'd much rather be talking about something that was an absolute slam dunk, an enjoyable ride from start to finish. I would rather sing the praises of a good time over a damp squib. But here we are nonetheless. I hope you found this interesting. Uh, I don't know if any of you really care about this, but I felt like I should say something about the subject. And until next time, this has been Mr. Icarus. Thank you very much for watching. Icarus out.